Um, now I'd like to introduce my good friend Patrick Green, who um, he works in the solar industry, um, and he's really, really concerned about what the government's trying to do to our renewable energy target um, right now. So he's going to share a bit of um, what the impact of cuts to renewables is going to have on the industry, but also the climate. So welcome, Patrick. Thanks, Dan. Good afternoon, Adelaide. Thanks everyone for turning out today. It's wonderful to see everyone here. Um, it's, uh, today we're calling on Prime Minister Tony Abbott to keep his election promise to protect the renewable energy target. My name is Patrick Green, as Dan said, and I've worked in the solar industry for, for six years now. Back in 2008 when I started, the, uh, the industry was still very much a cottage industry, but today, thanks to the renewable energy target, more than one and a half million Australian homes and thousands of businesses are powered by solar. Thanks to the renewable energy target, my son, who is five years old, and my three-year-old daughter have grown up thinking that solar panels are a completely normal part of the landscape. Something that was unthinkable only five or six years ago. In fact, solar is so much a part of, of my life that for my birthday recently, the kids, having discounted that I wouldn't want a, an octonauts cake or a frozen cake or, a, a, or something like that, decided they should, be, should make me a solar panel cake. And I was lying awake the other night thinking that perhaps we should all bake Tony Abbott a solar panel cake to remind him of his election promise. For myself and more than 13,000 solar workers around Australia, this industry is our livelihood. It's a highly skilled industry that we're committed to. It not only pays our mortgages and puts food on our table, but we go to, each, go to work each morning knowing that we're doing a little bit to make the climate a little bit safer for our kids. But I have to say, with this government in power, our entire industry is at risk with this review of the renewable energy target. This government is walking backwards on climate action and putting our kids' future at risk. I spoke to a Liberal Member of Parliament recently who told me that, well, the climate had always been changing and that I shouldn't be so worried our kids would adapt to it. I don't know about everyone here today, but I want to be able to look my kids in the eye and tell them we at least tried to leave them with a safe climate. Dozens of solar companies have already folded because of the uncertainty created by the government's review of the renewable energy target. Sadly, the company I worked for was one of them. And if regulatory uncertainty doesn't kill off the rest of the industry, the recommendations in the Warburton review will. This government is the only government in the world to repeal a price on carbon that was reducing emissions and growing the economy. This government appears hell-bent on dismantling every piece of legislation, every institution, every source of independent advice on how to tackle climate change, and in doing so is neglecting its duty of care to the Australian people, present and future. Yes. Ladies and gentlemen, the price on carbon pollution is gone. The Climate Commission is gone. The Clean Energy Finance Corporation is under threat. And now the renewable energy target, the country's last remaining tool to reduce pollution and transition to a clean energy economy is on the chopping block. So why does this government want to scrap the RET? Tony Abbott. That's a good, that's a good choice. Is it because it's lowered emissions by half a million cars worth of carbon pollution? Is it because it's attracted $18 billion of investment in the clean tech sector? Is it because it's created 20,000 green collar jobs in big cities and regional centres right across this country? Or is it because the RET will lower wholesale electricity prices and save families $160 a year on their power bills by 2020? It seems the renewable energy target is a victim of its own success. Because homes and businesses are becoming more energy efficient and using less energy, 
Demand for electricity has been falling for some time. So the fixed renewable energy target, which represented 20% of consumption when it was set, looks likely to deliver not 20%, but 27% of our electricity needs by 2020. Now I think it's pretty safe to say that everyone here today thinks that that's reason for celebration. Yeah. Particularly when the CSIRO and others tell us that we need to be doing a whole lot more than 20% renewables if we want to stick to a, a global warming limit of 2 degrees. In fact, the International Energy Agency warned recently that Australia would need to completely decarbonise its electricity within three decades if we're to stick to 2 degrees of warming. But rather than redouble their efforts to lower pollution, the government seems intent on slowing the uptake of renewables by closing the scheme or watering it down dramatically. Yay! Yay! So let's get this clear. The government has a policy that has enjoyed bipartisan support for six years. It's a policy supported by more than 80% of voters. It's a policy that's lowering long-term power prices and reducing emissions. And it's a policy that's creating thousands of jobs and supporting hundreds of small and medium businesses in the clean tech and renewable sectors right across the country. And it doesn't cost the government a single cent. That's a pretty bold argument when you consider that the IMF recently calculated oil, gas and coal producers in this country alone amounts to $23 billion a year. In contrast, the renewable energy target provides about $2 billion a year in cross-subsidies from polluting energy sources to clean energy sources. It's hard to argue that the big coal-fired power generators have been hard done by. In fact, they've known about the renewable energy target for six years. They've failed to plan. In fact, many of them have bought up additional coal assets knowing that demand for electricity was falling and the renewable energy target was in place. They are now arguing that those coal assets should be protected at the expense of renewables. And you know what, believe it or not, the government's independent review panel couldn't agree more. <laughs> so who are these independent experts, I hear you ask, that came to this conclusion? Well, the panel was chaired by one Dick Warburton, a noted climate sceptic and former chair of Caltex. <laughs> He was ably assisted by Shirley Intfelt, former CEO of Western Australia's biggest coal-fired electricity generation company. And then there was their old mate Brian Fisher, a former coal industry lobbyist who made up the numbers. So what did the, renew, what did the review recommend and what impact will it have on renewables in this country? The RET has two parts. A large-scale scheme designed for wind farms and, and large solar, and a small scheme for homes and small and businesses. Warburton has recommended that the large-scale scheme be closed to new entrants. This will kill off all investment in wind farms overnight in this country. For South Australia, with 40% of the wind capacity in the country, we stand to lose $4.5 billion of investment in the state and jeopardise 7,000 jobs. As if that wasn't enough, the Warburton Review decided that the small-scale scheme should either be scrapped or reduced dramatically, with a system size of 10 kilowatts as a maximum. This would kill off the commercial solar sector, one in which I worked, which was helping small and medium businesses reduce their energy costs. It would also mean that prices for household solar systems would jump by between 30 and 50 per cent overnight. These recommendations, if implemented, will cost thousands of jobs and lead to hundreds of renewable energy companies going bankrupt. Is that what we want? No! For many of us working in the sector today, whether or not we have a job by Christmas depends on the government's response to this review. And in part, that depends on you. So what can you do to help? Please, take a moment when you get home today to email your local MP and tell him, that you, him or her that you support no change to the renewable energy target. Even better, if you can call on Monday, that has an even bigger impact. Already we've got hundreds of great people mobilised here today, 
the Solar Citizens Group, the Australian Youth Climate Coalition, Repower Port Augusta and the Australian Solar Council. But what matters to MPs, and this is where these decisions get made, is that constituents care enough about an issue to call them up and register their position. So please, help us protect the renewable energy sector here in South Australia and across the country. The future of the industry depends on it. Thank you. Thanks, Patrick, for coming down.